So this video marks the one of the biggest builds I've ever done. And I got this file over at DO3D. As you can see, they've got amazing files, Finley gauntlets, full suits, guns. We're going to be focusing on one of my favorite characters, Batman. And we're actually going to be doing this Batman Justice League tactical bat suit. And as you can see, all the raised parts, uh, that's what we're going to be printing. And you can look at the site. You've got all the, the head, and that should be interesting to split up. We've got the uh, chest pieces. We've got all this stuff, as you can see. It looks awesome. I cannot wait to print this. Now, of course, these are not going to fit on the bed. I've got a CR-10, and it's a big printer, but not this big. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Mesh Mixer to actually split these files up so that they will print really well on that CR-10. Okay, now some people can be a little intimidated with Mesh Mixer, so let's go ahead and look for the file we want to start with for the Batman Tactical Suit by DO3D. And these, this suit is awesome. I've been wanting to make this for a while. And I got these files over at DO3D. Go check them out. Amazing stuff. Now, as you can see, it's a little big. There's a lot of pieces, parts. We are not going to be able to print that in one shot. How nice would that be? So first, let's take a look at separating the shapes here. And we'll be able to see how many pieces this model is broken into and sometimes it can take a little while because it's a big file and then the object browser pops up and we can see there are a lot of shapes and this is good because now we can split this up how we want so every little rivet every little thing is a shape so you can see I turn the eye off and the back pieces go away and the problem is they of course don't go in really uh, serious order so you kind of got to feel your way through until you get used to it so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off everything other than the chest piece and yes they are grouped together once you start figuring out how they're sort of set up in the browser and what you need to do is you need to turn off all the things that you don't want to export as one piece so as you can see here I'm turning off all the rivets all the pieces, all the parts, and if you notice, sometimes I'll hit turn the eye off and a piece from the chest goes away. So I just put the eye back on, open it back up, and in this way, that piece doesn't go away. And you can see for a file this big, this takes a little bit to get used to where everything is set up. And we've almost got it now. Yes, there we go. Everything is gone except for the chest pieces. So now I need to split it so I just have one side, one pack. So I'm going to go through with the little eyes and shut them and make sure that everything is off that I want off, but not on that side. And sometimes you'll shut off an eye and you'll be like, wow, where did that piece come from? You might have to rotate the model to see where it came from. You'll get more and more used to it as you go. And there we go. I got that last rivet. So now here we've got just this one pack and we can export just that and send it to our uh, send it to an STL file, create an STL. So you have to select so you can um, command or control whatever sort of computer you're on the pieces. You have to select all of them. Then you go to file and you export and you export it as an STL and really work on your naming convention here. So I'm going to call this Batman Tactical. Uh, what should I call it? Peck one, maybe? No, Peck left, Peck right. Chest. There we go. <laughs> I, you know, I recorded this about two weeks ago and I forgot what I recalled it. So it's chest right. So uh, there we go. And now it is exporting that as the right chest piece. And Again, this can take a little bit of time. It all depends on how complex the drawing is. And as you can see, that's real time. It took not long. Now I'm shutting the eyes off on that side. And I'm going to turn around and turn the eyes back on for the other side. Now you can see I've got that back piece showing up. It's because I actually have that one selected all the way up top. It's not on because the eye's not on but uh, we can see it. So I've just got to go through here and find, again, all the little pieces, parts that make this up. Now, as I go through this thing more and more to isolate everything, I start to remember where everything is and <laughs> things go a lot 
faster. But this is what you need to do when you've got a big model. You've got to actually split it all up and make sure you can get it on your print bed. So there we go. We're almost there. And I'm going to find this last little rivet if it kills me. And hopefully it won't kill me because then I won't be able to print this awesome Batman suit. I cannot wait to have this thing done. This is going to take forever. I've never printed a suit before, a complete suit. So I'm really super excited to do this, especially the painting and the weathering. Where I'm going to add LEDs, I can't wait. All right. For some reason, I'm not finding this last rivet. Where were those rivets again? Ah, there we go. So now again, I go ahead and command or control. I'm on a Mac, so I command click all the things with the eyes on. And that selects them. If you don't do that, if you just have the one, it'll just do the one piece. So there we go. That's the last one to go. Now we just go ahead and export that. And now we'll have the other side. So now I just go ahead and click on that name and then I change it. Now don't forget to change it to left or whatever or you'll copy over your file. So this way I've got these things broken up file wise because there's going to be a lot of files and I want to easily be able to figure out which is which. So now I've got the Batman uh, chest left, Batman technical chest right, and then I can go through all the files. Now here's the thing, we still have to break up pretty much everything else. Now. We're going to go with the, you know, the miracle of modern video editing really quickly through it. And again, you can see I'm just turning things on and off, making sure I have the correct pieces that go with that. And then I am exporting them. Now, I thought I would try to do two at a time for the abs because I'm pretty sure I can print that. And then the last two on the bottom. And if I have to split them up, I will. So here we are, we are now in Simplify 3D, it's what I use, and I'm choosing the Batman uh, chest piece, and you can see that will fit just fine. I use a CR10, and you can see the coupon code down in the description, and go ahead, go overhead and uh, pick one of those up if you've been dying to get a printer, it is awesome. And uh, if you purchase from that link, it helps the channel out, it can make me uh, able to do more reviews, and you know, just helps us out. So now I'm sort of centering this peck on here, and it's a weird shape. And sometimes half the art of printing is figuring how to, out how to lay things out on your bed. And as you can see, you know, there's high points, there's low points, and you really have to tweak your X, Y to really see how many points you can hit, hit the uh, bed with and sort of fool around with it. And it can take a while. So... I think that is pretty good. Uh, it's got some points that are, I'm a little concerned about, but the first print I make of this will probably be with like zero uh, infill just to see how things go. I'm then going to uh, generate some uh, supports to see. That's a lot of support material. Uh, I don't know if there's any way around that. Uh, I definitely don't want to flip this because if I flip it, there could be a problem, but let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens if we try some different configurations. Okay, so like I said, I just flipped it over actually, and here it is on the face. Now, not really happy with this one. I mean, it uses probably just about, maybe just as much, but here's the problem. If you're gonna print something like this, what ends up happening is you could really scar the front with uh, support material. It's a lot more sanding, and I, I don't really think it is the way to go, so we probably won't use this configuration. Like I said, it takes a little bit of time to figure this one out, and again, this one just is not going to do it. Okay, let's try one more, tipping this up. Uh, not really happy with this. Uh, I don't have the best of luck with these really long... Um, supports they tend to get a little wobbly they tend to move and then you know your your print dies when it gets up top now this not doing it for me so what we're probably going to do is we're probably just going to go ahead and go back to this setup now even this i'm not sure about because there's a lot of points in looking at it that it could fail uh those buckles make me a little bit nervous so i have an idea on what i think i want to do with this so that i can print it a lot easier Okay, now we're back in Mesh Mixer, and you can see all I did was import the peck piece that we cut up and brought over. And 
I'm going to try to see if we can make this a little bit smaller so that we can not have a such a large print time and have so much support material. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and look at my um, object browser and then go to plain cut. And then you can see we got a little line here. If I move out, you can see I'm hitting those little tick marks. It's ticking it off in solid increments like 90 degrees, 95 degrees. So that's really handy. Always use those or you could get a wonky cut. So I'm going to come right in the sort of, not in the middle, but I'm going to split it right here. And then you choose keep both. You want to keep both and hit OK. Then we go back to the object browser and we say, you know, separate shapes or separate shells. And there we go. We got a straight line going right down. And as you can see, if I click away, it's just like it was earlier when we had the full suit. I've split this. There's no loss of material. And now I'm going to be able to export this as a smaller peck piece. So just like before, we sort of isolate and find our pieces to see what is where. And we turn off what we don't want in the first piece of the STL we're going to export. Now once we figured that out and we get rid of those two little bolts there, or whatever they are, nuts, you can see we've got the main sort of file here. Now again we select both pieces, so you can see where the eyes are, I command it selected. And we export this, and I'm going to call it a Batman Tactical Chest, just like I had before, right? Part one. So again, I know exactly this is the chest piece and it's part one. Then, of course, we just go ahead and do the exact opposite. We turn on the other side to make sure that we export that. And you'd think I would know what it is by now, but I don't. <laughs> so we turn that on. We go through and we select all the eye open ones. Or, so those export. We go to File, Export. And I'm going to select this and then change this to 2. So it's now technical chest right half 2. Again, name things very, very you know, thoroughly. This way you never have to be like, oh, what file am I bringing in? What file am I not? For something like this, I'm going to then, once I have everything split up, I'm going to put a spreadsheet together. And I'm going to sort of record how much material is used. I can check off which things I've had done, which ones I've painted. Now you can look, we're back here to the... Uh, Simplify 3D, I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to bring in that half that we just made. And you can see a lot different, a lot smaller, and we're going to go ahead and situate this on the bed a little differently and just see a, it'll print extremely fast. We can even maybe even put two down. I think that's what I'll end up doing, putting two chess pieces down at the same time, and then this way we don't have to uh, have to wait too, too long. And if we rotate this, I don't think I'm going to rotate it that way. I think I'm actually going to drop it down on its side like this. This way it's got a nice clean area on the bottom. And it isn't going to use too, too many supports, hardly if any. A little bit here and there. Again, I'm going to tweak it a little bit more. We might even be able to get rid of these. Uh, I'd like to try to have as few supports in the front end as, as possible. And again, always do this. Flip your pieces around. See, you know, what uses the least amount of supports, uh, what, you know, uh, is the most stable on the bed. And then this way, it could always cut down on your print time. So let's go negative 90 and let's see what happens when we look at it uh, this way. We're going to clear the supports. We're going to center the piece. We've got to move some things out of the way. And you can see that. That one might not work too well because the the piece has that little sort of arc to it. So you've got those, um, you've got that little space. So I think I'm going to go bring it back to uh, 90 and drop it in and use that. Now, I think this will be the way I'm going to print it. I'm really actually happy with that. All right, and after some tweaking, this is what I ended up with. And let's see, let's go to prepare to print. It's calculating. And taking a little while. There's some a bunch of stuff that's got to figure out. What are we gonna bring? 15 hours. That's a lot for that piece. I'm still gonna do some tweaking with my speed and my um, 
everything. <laughs> I think I'm at 0.1 uh, layer height. So we're going to tweak it around and we're going to see what's going to happen. And now again, I'm just going to do the same thing with this piece that I did with the other piece. So I'm just going to bring this other half in, the bigger half, drop it down, and sort of, like I said, just work it around to see which way it lies best. Okay, I might tweak this some more, but this is along the lines, I think, I think where I'm going with it. There were too many supports that were like sort of raised in high supports. Uh, if anyone's watching this and has a, a, a better idea, obviously I totally want to hear that. So go ahead and leave some comments below. But this looks like where we're going to leave it. And we're looking at a lot of hours to print this. This is going to take quite a bit of time, this whole suit, but I can't wait. I am super excited. Uh, DO 3D amazing files this is just going to be fantastic i can all right so i have a lot more work to do chopping up these files and getting them ready for the printer aligning them on the bed now again i use a cr10 it is a workhorse everyone i'm sure has heard of it if you're interested in picking one up go to the description below and you can see a coupon code and that'll get you some money off over at GearBest, which is uh, pretty neat also check me out over at patreon so just go to patreon.com slash 3D printed props, or again, go to the description to click on the link. And last but not least, I am jumping on the Buy Me a Coffee bandwagon. As you can see in my videos, if you've watched any of them, I drink a lot of coffee, so I thought this was really funny. It's not like Patreon, it's a one time thing. And again, anything you guys do to help out the channel as far as buying things on uh, Amazon list over at uh, 3d printed props gear.com or buying me a coffee or you know using the coupon code to get your printer over at GearBest. all that does is sort of you know give the channel a little bit of money and help me buy filament which i am going to need a lot of for this suit all right guys i hope you liked the video i'm really excited to get started on this we've got a few more projects before we get going on printing this but soon enough we'll be working on this full justice league tactical suit